Hi, I'm Hope from HopeBroidery.com, and today I'm going to show you five different stitches for following lines and curves in hand embroidery. So we're going to start with back stitch. And this is really simple. It's probably one of the first stitches you learned. If you're googling how to follow curves in hand embroidery, you probably already know how to do the back stitch. But if not, this is how you do it. You start with one single tiny little straight stitch. You go up about that same distance and then back down through that hole. So that's why it's called back stitch. And I'm saying about that same distance because you really don't have to measure or get it exactly right or anything like that. It, you just want your stitches to be more or less consistent. Next is stem stitch. This is one of my very favorite stitches. You're going to start by bringing your needle up bringing it down about the same distance you would do a back stitch but you leave a loop like you can see there then you bring your needle back up through that hole that you just created and pull so right now it just looks like a straight stitch with a little tail you're going to do that process again by bringing your needle up just about that same distance leaving a loop then bring your needle back up through that hole you just created and now it's going to start taking on that rope like texture that stem stitch is so well known for if you pay attention to where my looped floss is you'll notice it's always to the outside of the curve that's the important key thing for this stitch is to keep your looped floss to the outside of your curve so for this particular pattern my curve is going to switch directions once i get to the center part of this line of stitching and you'll notice that my looped floss goes from one side of this line to the other because the curve switches over and that just helps me to follow the curve more cleanly. At the same time I have totally followed a line of stitching like this by just keeping that same direction in my curve the entire time and just being extremely careful to keep my stitches nice and steady and close together and it will still follow that line pretty smoothly but if you really want it to be smooth and consistent you'll change the direction of your looped floss as you switch in and out of different curves now I do love stem stitch but this was a stitch that took me forever to remember how to do or to understand how to do it. So if any of this is confusing for this stitch, for back stitch, for any of the other stitches that we're going to do, this is a good point for me to remind you that I actually have full length videos for a lot of these stitches and I have blog tutorials for all of these stitches as well. So on the blog you're going to find a different video format, written instructions, and photo step by step instructions. And if a blog doesn't float your boat, you're in luck because I also have a book entitled Satisfying Stitches, Learn Simple Embroidery Techniques and Embrace the Joys of Stitching by Hand. And the stitches that you see in this video, I actually chose because they're the five stitches for following lines and curves that I outline in that book. So you can get that from your local library, order it from an indie bookstore or wherever books are sold. Our third stitch is whipped back stitch, which starts with a line of simple back stitching, which you already know how to do, so I've only sped up this part this quickly to get us to the fun part. Once you've finished your line of back stitch, you'll bring your needle back up through the hole of wherever your stitch either starts or ends. You can start on either end, really. Then bring your needle underneath that first back stitch and pull underneath the second back stitch and pull and all the way down. Your needle is not going to go back through your fabric until you're done with this line of stitching. Now this is a curvy line but if you imagine me stretching it out until it's just one single straight line you'll see that I'm going in the same direction as I do this weaving motion from the top of the line of stitching all the way down. So yeah, it's curved, but if it were straightened out to a straight line, you would see that I'm going from right to left, from right to left, from right to left. So you wanna make sure that you're consistent in the direction that you're placing your needle in terms of if it's going from the right to the left, up, down, depending on the orientation of the line that you're stitching. This is a stitch that for some reason I didn't 
try for years when I first started embroidery, but I'm so glad I finally did because it's super duper simple and it makes such a beautiful smooth line, which sometimes that's the effect you're going for versus that more textured yet smooth line of the stem stitch. Sometimes I'll use this one. I thought I was just going to use backstitch, but my backstitch got messed up and I thought I know how to fix that. Now to end the line of stitching, you're just going to take your needle straight through that initial back stitch that you made and pull it right through your fabric. And the fourth stitch I'm showing you today is split back stitch, which starts off just like a normal back stitch, except instead of going back through the last hole that I created, I'm going to go back through the last stitch, splitting it in half roughly, pulling my needle through and then going back up about that same distance and splitting the last stitch that I just made and on and on and on. Now this should not be confused with split stitch, which is a little bit different because instead of going back down through your previous stitch, you're coming up through your last stitch and then down. Um, I can show that in another video. I find that to be way more difficult than this, but they do produce different effects. When you use split stitch, it's a little bit smoother of a line than when you do split back stitch. So I have convinced myself that I like split back stitch more, but it could be because it's just way easier for me to do. To end a line of split back stitch, instead of going forward, you'll just go through that last hole you made and split that last stitch on itself. And for couching, which is my fifth stitch for following lines and curves and hand embroidery, I'm actually going to zoom out. It's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing when you can see a larger work area, I think. So I've taken one strand of floss and brought that through my fabric. Now I'm taking a second strand of floss, a second separate strand of floss and bringing that through my fabric. And then I'll be placing small little straight stitches on top of that original strand of floss to couch it down to the line that I've drawn for myself. And so this original strand of floss that I brought through my fabric is not gonna go back down through my fabric until I'm done with this line of stitching. Instead, it's this second strand of floss that I'm using to make my little tiny straight stitches to couch down that original strand. Now, looking back at this video right now as I do this voiceover, I'm reminded of the fact that I use very long strands of floss when I'm stitching, which can make this kind of difficult in terms of getting into the rhythm of the couching stitch only because I've got a bunch going on but you can see that I do eventually get into the rhythm of couching and a lot of people suggest using shorter cuts of floss to stitch because you'll end up with fewer knots and it's less tangly uh, like how I was in the beginning of this stitch. I use longer cuts of floss because I just really hate threading my needles so that's that's just the habit that I got myself into. And around this portion of my line of stitching, you can see that I'm making my couching stitches just a little bit closer together than they were at the start of the line of stitching. And that was not intentional. That was just a reflection of, oh, I'm near the end of this project. And I wasn't thinking. And I made my stitches too long at the beginning. But I know I say this all the time, there's no right or wrong way to do this, especially if you're doing this specific style of embroidery. So under the umbrella of embroidery is freehand embroidery, which is what I'm doing. And it's okay to do whatever you want. And between you and me, I'm going to tell people that was on purpose if they ask. But this does bring me to a really important piece of advice that I give people, which is that in general, the tighter your curve, the closer you want your stitches to be together in terms of being able to follow that curve really nicely. If it's a more gentle curve, you can have those stitches be farther apart. And in general, you really just want your stitches to be consistent, whether or not they're very long or very short. So to end couching, all you're gonna do is take that original strand of floss and bring that straight down through your fabric. 
I've brought us back up close so that you can see that couching up close, but also so you can watch me stitch these last two little pieces of this rose. I'm using backstitch for the leaf here on the left, but I'm also going to use backstitch for the next leaf, but I'm going to do a little bit differently. So in both cases, I'm going to try to keep my stitch lengths consistent. But for this first leaf, I'm using stitches with a very short distance in between each stitch. It takes me a little bit longer, but if this is the aesthetic look or feel that I'm going for, it's what I would want to do, even if I'm following a more gentle curve like what I'm doing there. In this second leaf, I'm using longer stitch lengths. I'm still trying to be consistent. This is gonna go by much more quickly for me, and if it's the aesthetic I wanna go for, then that's great. If not, then I can go back to those shorter stitch lengths, but it's nice to know when you have options. Watch this. Whoa, I did not mean to make such a cool transition. I'm just showing the back of the hoop here, and I want to say thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'll leave a bunch of links in the description of this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. That sounds sarcastic, but actually it would be really great if you could like and subscribe. Thank you.